Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Shooting Sports. Today we're taking a look at one of my favorite things, weird shotguns from the 1990s. The shotgun that we're looking at itself isn't actually that weird. It's a super common shotgun. This is a Winchester Model 1300 Defender. It's a Defender model because it has the extended magazine tube which gives it a capacity of seven rounds. Um, Winchester shotguns like this aren't a product of the 1990s at all. The, Model 1200 and the Model 1300 uh, originated in like 1968, and the uh, early versions actually saw use in combat. Um, there was a military model of the 1200 that included like a bayonet lug and things like that. But in the civilian market, uh, the Defender, the, or the, the 1200 and 1300 well, didn't really take off. They're not as ubiquitous as, you know, something like the 870 or the Mossberg 500. Um, and it's kind of a shame because they're actually like very simple, very slick shotguns. They operate very well. Uh, usually they're, you know, no fuss. They just are pretty basic guns. This, this one, this one's not, this one is not simple at all. Uh, it's actually quite gross and I need to clean it up. Um, but I picked it up used recently, uh, because I have a slight fetish for, firearms that you might see being used by like a SWAT team in a 1990s movie. Um, you know, something that you could easily see being, you know, slung on the back of the response team in Die Hard or something like that. And this particular Model 1300 really checked those boxes. Uh, first things first is the stock. This is a Choke Tool Core uh, top folding stock they are very much a product of their time. Um, they actually have like a really good sturdy steel foundation. The arm is steel. Even the butt pad is made of steel. They just have this rubber coating on them. Um, and it has a choat uh, pistol grip on the bottom, which is the same type of pistol grip, pretty similar to what you'd see on like an EBR, um, you know, like a precision pistol grip, uh, but they were making these, I believe before they were making those. Um, and it folds sort of like the very poor man's uh, Spaz 12. Push this button and then oh, this guy's on a spring and it folds down like thus and gives you, so we'll talk about this one's particular issues, but it gives you just not a very good anything. Like it's not terribly comfortable in your shoulder uh, your cheek weld is too low, but if you were using uh, this with like a, a riot shield or a gas mask or something like that, you would actually, you know, you're not worried too much about a cheek weld, you'd actually be able to do pretty well. But with an actual cheek weld, um, I am staring at the hinge. This doesn't do me any good for precision aiming of a shotgun. This particular one, how this button works is there's a, uh, a spring there a disc spring and this one has given up the ghost some time ago I think it was left kind of partially compressed it feels like it was left like that for maybe like a decade or three and that unfortunately caused the spring to lose its gusto because it has too much free play where there should be none uh, so I'm actually looking for a new spring for that um, but when the spring works these are actually they lock in place pretty tight and are actually you know stability wise they aren't too bad. I just love the design. I mean, look at that. It just folds up top, and then when it can lock in place well, you know, when the, the mechanism does what it's supposed to, you can almost use it kind of like a rudimentary carry handle and carry the thing around. Just too much fun. Up front, you have a pistol grip as well. Um, I think think it's also a choke product but I don't know for sure and I can I'll put in the comment section every video I do of these is completely unscripted um I kind of just go off of my base knowledge a little bit of prep work uh but I forgot to look up who actually makes these uh it might have been choke it might have been Butler Creek it seems like a Butler Creek product but I don't know for sure but it is a vertical forward grip um the weird thing about these and this is a feature not a bug They are free to rotate like 
180 degrees. Actually, even a little bit more. You could run it real high if you felt like being completely ridiculous. Um, there's no stop or anything to stop you from doing that. And that was designed to be kind of a feature where maybe you don't want to have your arm fully extended like that. Maybe you want to have it kind of cocked to the side a little bit for whatever reason. Shooting practice, practices in the 1980s and 90s were a very different beast than they are today. Um, ergonomically, it's not good. It's not a good grip with the stock extended. Let's get that guy out. See if we can get this whole thing in frame. So with the stock extended, this has a short length of pull, which is nice. And then up here has a crazy long reach. Now I can't stress, I'm six foot two. I have a massive wingspan compared to the average person. And my left arm is completely locked forward. Now that's gonna do good things for recoil management. If I were a few inches shorter, that would be completely unable to be used. It's just, it's such a weird design um, that just really, I don't know. I don't know, but I love it. I love it. I love the weird eccentricities of this thing. And it's just, it's so fun. And one of the big things I like about the 1300 series is a very smooth action. A very fast action as well. I'll go ahead and let's see we are on an empty chamber and an empty magazine tube. But you can just, you can go through very quickly. As you can see, that stock dropped because that spring needs to be replaced. But it's a fast action. It's a very fast and smooth shotgun action. And I really, really like it. Um, it reminds me of a lot of my vintage, like pre-1968 Mossberg 500. It's just, it's a, it's a fast, fast, fast action. Um, much faster, much smoother than even modern stuff that you're seeing in production. So <sighs> game plans, game plan, game plan. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do with this one. Um, it is a good shooter. I put rounds through it um, and it, it shoots, it shoots well. She's a dirty girl. She needs just literally some cleaning up. There's a little bit of surface rust, but I really think this one is gonna fill the need that I bought that uh, other Moss, that Mossberg 500 that I bought, where I had originally purchased it to make it into a short barreled shotgun. But then I got the thing and found out that it was a pre-1968 unserialized Mossberg 500 and was probably one of the prettiest shotguns I'd ever seen. And I really, felt it was a bad idea to do that. Now this one, she's dirty. She doesn't have that nice historical provenance. She's got period correct 1990s, but still just kind of weird accessories on there. And I think I might SBS this one. Now, building a short barrel shotgun out of this particular one is going to be a little bit of a headache because it is the Defender model, the normal model 1300. This guy here, where the uh, end cap for the magazine tube was actually right about here. And then you could get an extended tube, uh, but normally you just have the, the end cap just right about there in a shorter tube. Um, those are easy to SBS because you get your stamp, you get it done, and you just chop the barrel down. Obviously that's not the case here. So the easiest way is going to be to spend money on a cheap shotgun plus a stamp and all that jazz because you know, I like not openly committing felonies on the internet, um, but buying a standard model 1300 or model 1200 magazine tube that ends right about here, and then buying a standard model 1300 uh, barrel that ends up here, but is right here, and then uh, being able to cut it. Now, what would be cool and what would be a very pretty gun would be this with a vent rib barrel. I just love short vent rib barrels. Um, and the, the overall barrel length on this guy would be something like 12 inches if I ended it up there. Um, yeah, that's about right, because I think this is a 20 inch barrel on here. Um, so it'd be like 12 or 13 inches. Uh, and God, that would just look very, very, very nice, especially with a vent rib up there. It would just add some 
bulk and a little bit of verticality to this design um, that would look very nice. It would make for a very cool little shotgun. Uh, definitely something that looks like it belongs on the set of Die Hard or on you know the set of Terminator or on the set of Total Recall or something like that. Like it's just it has that like 1980s 1990s vibe to it that is just immaculate. And that's one of the reasons why I purchased this very inexpens inexpensive uh, Model 1300. Um, going to do some fun stuff to it. Going to fix some of the kinks. And if nothing else, God, I need to clean it up. It is literally just dirty and uh, has a lot of gunk on it that needs to go. So stay tuned. We will see what else I do with this. We'll get it out to the range. I actually have, it's, it's warming up again. My outdoor range, which is why I'm not able to get a lot of good range videos in the winter time my outdoor range is no longer buried under a foot of snow or so spring is coming it's warming up and uh, i will be able to get out and get some awesome range videos for you guys but uh, i think running this even with that ridiculously long support arm position uh, i think i could uh, do some cool little tactical drills with this so uh, many thanks to you guys for watching and uh, stay tuned to see what we do with this next